I'm excited to announce that after six months of waiting, Subaru has finally released a software update to address the touchscreen display to make it easier to navigate and easier to control. We saw some of these changes being made on the 2023 model Outback and Legacies, and that quickly made a lot of people who own the previous generation or the previous years, 2020 through 2022, really upset that they didn't have those same capabilities. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what is being changed, what is now available for previous owners, 2020 through 2022 owners of the Outback and Legacy. And also we're gonna end with showing you how or telling you how to go about getting this update for your Subaru yourself. Here's a look at the touchscreen display. We are right now sitting in a 2022 Outback Wilderness, courtesy of one of my coworkers here. He just had this update performed just moments ago. The update does take about an hour. I'm gonna talk more details on that here a little later in this video. But I wanted to show you guys first what we get with this software update to help you identify what is different between this and the previous generation. So we're gonna hop between this 2022 Outback, which now has the, or shares the same design layout as the 2023 Outback. And then I'm also going to hop in here in just a moment, the 2020 Outback that we have that still has the previous software. It doesn't, has not been updated yet. We'll be doing that one soon. So that'll help you compare the two and see how this layout really changes. So we're gonna be focused on the lower portion of the screen. One thing that was, was a big change for Subaru in 2020 is the incorporation of all these digital controls for the 2020 model year in the Outbacks and Legacies, mainly the climate controls. Down here below, a lot of people have previously complained about the size of the fan speed controls, how they're just, they're harder to click on as you're driving without, you know, having to take your eyes off the road. And so that is, is obviously a safety concern. And what Subaru did to address that was make these soft touch keys much larger. So you don't have to be as accurate where you're clicking. And then here is what it looks like with the previous generation software with these smaller touchscreen controls. You'll see they're much smaller and less, you have to be more accurate when you're clicking them. On top of the fan speed controls, you also have these temperature controls that are in a large rectangular area. So this entire soft touch area is one giant button. So you can touch anywhere from 63 to 65, so from left to right, and it will pull up your climate controls for both the left and the right. This is a lot easier than the previous generation. In the previous generation, this is what it looks like. You had to not only click on the individual person if you've got dual climate, so you wanna click on the driver's side, you click on that, and then you have to individually adjust their climates. And then also for your heated seat controls, these are so much better. This is probably one of my favorite additions to the new software and they are just one touch soft keys, high, medium, low. You can do it for your passenger side. You don't have to go into a second menu to activate that. You can also click on this and say you wanna turn it off. You click and hold and it turns it off. You don't have to cycle through high, medium, low. So that is a lot more convenient than the previous generation. And here's what it looks like with the previous gen. If you were curious, you have to not only click on the heated seat, either the driver or the passenger that you wanna control, but then you have to go to the second part of that menu and click where you want to, uh, what heat level you want your seats to be at. If you have a 2023 Subaru Outback, you've probably noticed that yours does not have this AVH soft touch button on your touchscreen display. And that is also new for this update that was just released. So it was just released March, 2023. And if you don't have this, you can still get that update. I actually have not performed it yet on my car, but I will be doing that soon. And this AVH button can easily be activated now just by clicking that. So you can be anywhere on your screen here and that AVH button stays there. It's not going away and it's easy to get to as a quick shortcut. So you don't have to create a second shortcut. And in the previous generations, you didn't even have that option to have a shortcut. So now you have that AVH control there. If you're curious what AVH does, this stands for auto vehicle hold. It holds the electronic brake in place for you. So if you are waiting in traffic, you're at a, a red light, you're waiting for a train, whatever it may be, where you're gonna be sitting for an extended period of time, instead of holding your foot on the brake for the entirety of that stop, and, and also instead of putting your car into park, you can keep your car in drive. And when you come to a complete stop, you just release your foot and relax. 
and AVH will stay active. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So for auto vehicle hold to work, you just have to tap that on, make sure it's lit up green. This does always shut off by default. So each time you restart your car manually with the push button start or key switch, you do have to make sure that you tap that on. Or now if you have that quick shortcut over here, right next to auto start stop, you can click that. But as you're driving along, you'll see AVH is lit up green. And say you come up to traffic that's at a complete stop or a stop sign, a red light, a train, a situation where you might be sitting for a while. I'm gonna of course slow down, apply the brake completely. Look down here, once you see AVH flashing, you can release your foot and let your foot off the brake. You can relax. So I don't have my foot on the brake right now. The car is still in drive. So this makes it a lot more convenient because whenever the traffic proceeds and it's, it's time to go, I don't have to go from park to drive and risk the person behind me honking at me. Within a split second, I just tap my foot on the gas and the car takes off just like that. If you like using that auto vehicle hold feature, unfortunately on the older generation, the 2020 through 2022 without the software update, requires you to make a couple extra steps. So first you have to click on the car settings icon here and then go down to where it says auto vehicle hold and you have to tap that on. And the downside is that shuts off every time the car is restarted. So you have to do that two step process each time. So that's why it's so convenient now to have that AVH button there on the main screen. Now to answer the question that many of you guys have had, and that is how do you go about getting this software update performed if you have the older software? The best thing to do is to contact your local Subaru retailer and have them do this. If your car is under the three year 36 thousand mile warranty then this should be covered under that warranty however if your car is outside of the warranty then it will cost whatever the labor is to do this now it takes about an hour to do this software update and while it's not a very complicated process it is something that is intended for a Subaru service technician to complete it's not intended for uh, public use I know there are a lot of people on forums with videos and files floating around where people have shared this and done the done this update themselves. I've actually had subscribers and some of my own personal customers reach out to me and say, hey, I've already done this update, it worked well, and that's good, I'm, I'm happy for them. But if you're not technologically savvy, I would definitely discourage you from this and really I would discourage you from it even if you are because a lot of times this can be done for free if you've got a fairly new vehicle that's under warranty or if it's not done for free it can be done at a low cost it's just going to be whatever the hourly rate is your shop charges so that is just a word of caution with this if you were curious the way they do this is they they download these files it's a pretty large file so uh, it's actually four of them for the older generations and so they have to put it on a thumb drive here and then they download it and put it into the usb input there they put your car into dealership mode and they do the software update. When you contact your Subaru retailer, be sure to reference the service bulletin number down below. I'm gonna leave those in the, the uh, description below for you guys. And they will be able to look up this software update because this is a new update that just came out in early March. They likely may even have not heard about it among all the other things that are going on. There's always updates coming out for many different models and different things that they are dealing with. So if they don't know what it is, it doesn't mean they can't do it. It just, they haven't heard of it yet. It's so new. So reference those service bulletins below based on your model and year vehicle, and they'll be able to help with that. Of course, I can try to help answer general questions for you guys. You can leave those down in the comment section below. As always, if you guys found value in this video, it really helps me out a ton if you click the like button. So I'd really appreciate that. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.